this is Emma at the Three Sisters Intercropping Project at Iowa State University. I'm here in our Three Sisters garden where we've been growing corn, bean, and squash with a sunflower perimeter. And so I want to talk to you guys a little bit today about an issue that we've been having in our garden plot for the two years that we've been growing here, and that is corn smut. So we're growing historic indigenous varieties. Um, and when it comes to heirlooms or older corn varieties, many don't have the smut resistance bred into them that many mo modern cultivars do. And corn smut is a fungus um, that overwinters in the soil and then it can infect plants through rain or uh, the galls can spore and the spores will travel. And these tumors can really affect pretty much any part of the corn plant. So here's an example of, of tumors on the corn tassel, but they can affect the leaves, the stems, and most problematic is when the fungus infects the corn ears. This is an early warning sign of smut. You can see that the plant is stressed by the discoloration, but you can also see the small galls beginning to form. And so this is an example of a completely infected ear. So as you can see, the smut is bursting out through the husk. And it's really an issue when it gets to be this bad because as you can see the fungus is completely taking over what would be the corn kernels so when many when many ears are infected like this yield will be significantly lower at the end of the season and corn smut has really been an issue for us um, because of two main reasons the first being that we're growing a susceptible cultivar so the indigenous land race that we're using um, has very high levels of susceptibility to smut. And we didn't know that the land that we're growing on had smut before we planted. And then the second issue with why our corn smut problem is so bad is because we're growing on organic land. And when it comes to corn smut control, fungicides aren't very effective even in conventional operations, but there are no chemical controls for corn smut in organic operations. So really our only management um, practices that we can do to try to prevent further infection of smut on our corn is to remove the galls by hand before they can sporulate. But aside from that, other management practices is we have switched over to using drip irrigation instead of the overhead that we had last year. Um, because with overhead, you know, very similar to rain, it uh, can spread the spores quite a lot easier than in conditions that aren't so wet. So I'll just be showing a few examples of how to remove corn smut from your garden if you notice it. So one of the first things that I noticed being infected in our garden plot was the corn tassels. So what I've, I've been doing is I've just been removing the tassels that are infected with the smut and taking them out of the garden. And so what I have to be really careful of is that if I'm touching a plant that has been infected with smut, I should not touch any of the other plants that do not have it because I could unknowingly and unwillingly transfer the smut um, and infect other plants within my garden. When I have a large ear infected like this though, I can recognize that these galls are very close to breaking open and spreading their spores. So at this stage when the plant is so badly infected like this, I would just remove the entire ear. And so in conclusion, if you're growing heirloom varieties or cultivars that are more susceptible to corn smut, what you can do in your garden is you can remove galls by hand before they set spore and take them out of your garden, being careful not to infect other plants. You can use drip irrigation instead of overhead. And, you know, if you're not doing a soil experiment, you could rotate your crops. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.